Welcome to CNN Student News. As the new week begins, many people around the world are paying tribute to Nelson Mandela. He helped end apartheid, South Africa's practice of racial segregation. He became the country's first democratically elected president. Mandela died last Thursday at 95. Our show from last Friday covered his life and legacy. Yesterday was a national day of prayer in South Africa. An official memorial service is scheduled for tomorrow. Several world leaders are set to attend. Mandela's memory is being honored around the globe. Our nation has lost its greatest son. We saw in him what we seek in ourselves. He was just a huge, larger in line figure. He was a magnanimous person. He was a compassionate person. like him in my lifetime. He was remarkable. I mean, he, you know, he had a wicked sense of humor, uh, a twinkle in his eye. And yet at the same time, there was the serious side to him. What an extraordinary and inspiring man Nelson Mandela was. He was the person that I think more than any other person in the late 20th century represented the triumph of the human spirit over adversity. <laughs> He didn't compromise his principles, and he was so gracious, a gracious man. He very seldom can find that combination of virtues and values and principles all in one person. But it was all there in one man that we all came to know and love, Madiba, Nelson Mandela. Many around the world were greatly influenced by his selfless struggle. He touched our lives in deeply personal ways. I am one of the countless millions who drew inspiration from Nelson Mandela's life. My very first political action was a protest against apartheid. The day he was released from prison gave me a sense of what human beings can do when they're guided by their hopes and not by their fears. We would ask everybody at the Adelaide Oval to stand, please, for a minute's silence in respect of the life of Nelson Mandela. For now, let us pause and give thanks. For our first Roll Call of the Week, we thought we'd add a little color to Roll Call festivities. We're going to start with the Purple Riders from Martins Ferry High School in Martins Ferry, Ohio. Over in Fishers, Indiana, we've got the Golden Hawks from Riverside Junior High, and we'll round out our roll with the Red Devils. They're from Central High School in Phoenix City, Alabama. Economic indicators and winter weather. Economy's up first. The new U.S. unemployment rate, 7%, lowest it's been in five years. In November, the economy added 203,000 jobs. Some experts see these as good signs for the economy, but there are still 11 million unemployed Americans, and more than a third of them have been out of work for at least six months. Like economic data, weather reports are full of highs and lows. In Dallas last Wednesday, for example, the high was 80 degrees. By Thursday night, a low in the 20s. A winter storm blasted into the region, bringing freezing rain and sleet. The winter weather moved east over the weekend. Experts predicted temperatures would be back on the rise today. When someone from one country visits another, it's unusual for that person to be held prisoner. That's what happened to Merrill Newman, though, when he took a trip to North Korea. The country isolates itself from most of the rest of the world, so it's very difficult to understand its decisions. One thing we do know is that the situation involving Merrill Newman is over. Good morning. I'm delighted to be home. Merrill Newman, the 85-year-old Korean War veteran, spent six long weeks in captivity. It's not clear why the North Korean government suddenly let him go. But the state's news agency said he was deported for humanitarian reasons and because he was repentant. I can understand that in the U.S. and Western countries, there is misleading information and propaganda about DPRK. It came a week after the former Army intelligence officer and later Silicon Valley executive gave this statement for his alleged war crimes while in Korea some 60 years ago. And killed three innocent operators, delayed the munition supply. Some described it as highly scripted political theater. This is a pattern of the North Koreans. They, 
make uh, some of these prisoners do confessions. They basically feel they have enormous leverage over you, and you know you're 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 in a North Korean prison. Uh, you say that. Following his release, Newman first went to China, then flew home to San Francisco. His son and wife by his side at the airport. It's uh, it's been a great, great homecoming, and uh, I'm tired, but. Uh, uh, ready to be with my family now and uh, thank you all for the support we got. Here in Palo Alto at Newman's retirement complex you can see the yellow ribbons to welcome him home. Though the U.S. has no formal relations with North Korea, a White House official says that Newman's release was the direct result of contact between Washington and the North Korean capital. Thousands of Westerners travel to North Korea each year at their own peril. Newman went there in October as part of a 10-day tour. The day before leaving, he had reportedly spoken to some Korean authorities about his military service. He was eventually pulled off his airplane just minutes before it was to depart. It's time for the shout out. How many countries have teams in the FIFA World Cup tournament? If you think you know it, then shout it out. Is it 8, 16, 32, or 64? You've got three seconds. Go. Every four years, there are 32 nations in the World Cup soccer tournament. That's your answer, and that's your shout-out. Now we know which countries will be playing each other in the opening round of the next World Cup. Last Friday, the draw was announced. Eight groups, four countries per group. Starting in mid-June, they'll face off in stadiums like this one all over Brazil. The people will be watching from all over the world. That's why the teams aren't the only ones trying to get in. As teams from countries the world over were fighting for one of the coveted 32 spots, big global brands were battling it out to be associated with the FIFA World Cup. Estimated by some at a cost of $100 million each to be an official sponsor. So when you're talking to companies which are looking to have a global exposure, World Cup is the platform where you have global exposure. When it comes to current sponsors for FIFA, it's Visa, not MasterCard. Adidas, not Nike. McDonald's, not Burger King. Coca-Cola, not Pepsi. The FIFA World Cup is the, is the pinnacle. For Coke, the World Cup is key. In 2010, uh, the campaign was the biggest ever marketing plan for brand Coke ever. And the ambition is to go higher. Coke estimates some 2 billion people were actively, quote, engaged with the 2010 World Cup in South Africa, not just watching a match or two. Their goal, says Coke, attracting teenagers. Brand experts say global corporations are often associated with other big sporting events as well. If you sponsor things like the World Cup, the Olympics, the Champions League, you've got a big ad in the Super Bowl, effectively you're saying to people, we are a big, great brand. You should aspire to be associated with us. You should want our products. And if you aren't there, your competitor will be. This is the, the, the number one passion for Latin America, for Europe. Uh, it's, it's more than just a sport. It's, it's about culture. You have to be there. You have to go and own that space. That space also goes totally against the new trend of niche marketing and micro-targeting. Though for the brands, it's not about selling a specific product. It's about your brand basking in the glow of the Super Bowl or the Olympics or the FIFA World Cup. Jim Bolden, CNN, London. You've probably heard your parents say, don't chew with your mouth open. I don't think anyone's gonna tell that to this shark. This video comes courtesy of a camera that was attached to the bottom of a boat. The sailors strung out bait and got this view of a shark chowing down. The animal just thought it was having lunch. Little did it know it was about to become a YouTube sensation. It's a classic bait and switch. After the shark's hunger had abated, it might have felt guilty, but that's a different tale. We've reached today's finish line. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye now.